Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I'm your host, Mrs. M. And if you haven't, make sure you click the link below. That way you can subscribe to my channel and not miss out on anything you need to scale your business to six figures and beyond. Pow! So today in this video, I am going to go through the 10 tips lessons that I actually learned doing government contracts and what really helped me. So that way you can learn from things that I did well and things that I didn't do well. So stay with me in this video, have your pen and paper, and hopefully at the end, you will have some actionable items that you can implement to look at winging government contract by the end of 2024 and setting yourself up into winning government contracts into 2025. Now I'm gonna go through them in not any certain order, but there are some that I'm gonna emphasize because they really did help me. So the very first thing is I, in the beginning, and I've been doing this now for over 24 years. In the beginning, I didn't have a capability statement because so many people said you didn't need it. Eh, not true. I definitely realized that the capability statement was something that I needed and it set me apart because it was kind of like a calling card, which kind of gave me an in when I was looking at working with government buyers. So I definitely needed a capability statement. The second thing is not realizing all the things you can do by having a professional website. So the second thing is making sure you have your professional website. You definitely need that. I know hundreds of thousands of our students that have gone on to win contracts. The very first thing they mentioned was that the government buyer wanted to look at their website. The third thing is making sure that you understand what are the requirements. Making sure that you have your UEI is a big one in order to do your, you know, your cage code, your UEI, and of course, making sure you understand your NAX code. It is true. When you come down, focus more, more opportunities open up instead of throwing things at the wall and hoping that something sticks. So number four is making sure that you are financially ready. Yes. I thought I was ready for an opportunity. I had a large opportunity for doing construction. This is when I started long, 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 long time ago. And I realized that I didn't have enough money to be able to meet the payroll because I wanted to use employees. So that was a big decision to use subcontractors as opposed to employees, especially when I was doing the middleman method. Very, very important. You definitely don't want to not be able to meet your payroll needs because that's not a good look and it causes a lot of stress. So make sure you have your money lined up. Number five, make sure that you understand how they're going to pay you. You don't want to think you're going to get paid in net 14 or that you're going to get something in two weeks and you find out that you're not going to get paid for 30 days or so. Now, when does this really come into play? Tip number six, when you're looking at all the opportunities that you can actually have by doing subcontracting as you being the subcontractor. I can emphasize that more than I could on almost any other tip. My big break came back when I started to understand the importance and the opportunities for being a subcontractor. One, I didn't have to worry about getting paid as long as it might take to get everything set up in the system if I was looking at being the prime. Two, it gave me a little bit less stress because I got a chance to see what they were doing and then I could look at what I wanted to do differently or better. So there are a lot of opportunities to making sure you come in as a sub. Number seven, if you're looking at coming in as a sub, then you wanna make sure that you try to look at specializing in something. I love specializing in disaster relief contracts. A lot of opportunities. I was in Florida, so there was a lot of things that were there. So look at specializing when you're looking at coming in as a subcontractor. Number eight, do not wait to the last minute to learn what you think you wanna specialize in. It's a little late when you're in the middle of the disaster relief contracts and you realize you need specialized trucks or equipment and you don't have it. So always understand what you need when you're specializing so that way you can hit the ground running. Number nine, definitely, definitely, definitely understand your contract format. What I mean by that is all contracts have like a uniform contract format. Understand that. I have a lot of individuals that'll reach out and they'll say, I'm ready to win a government contract. And you ask them basic questions, basic questions on pricing, 
Do they know if they want to win something with a no bid? Do they want to do a, you know, like a simplified acquisition procedure? So when I'm talking about that, making sure you know what method you want to win. Do you want to go out and build the relationships when it comes to a no bid? Do you want to look at winning a quote? Do you want to look at doing a, let's say, a trying to be, do sources sought? So many ways. But really look at what's a good fit for you and understand it all has a lot to do with your experience, your past experience, what you're bringing to the table. All of that matters. But number 10, the number one thing that I know makes the difference is how I think. If I think I can do it, I can do it. You can go to all the YouTube channels and you can do all of this. But if you don't have the mindset right that this is something, A, you really want to do. B, it's very lucrative. C, you have to put the work in. It's not going to fall in your lap no matter what people say. You're going to have to put the work in, even if it's registering in SAMS or paying someone to do it for you. You want to make sure that you think you can do it, you know you can do it, and understand why you can do it. And then everything else falls into place as far as the relationship building, love doing relationship buildings, uh, building relationships with government buyers in my local area would be just an extra tip I'll give to you guys that stay to the end. So is this something you can do? Absolutely. Does it make sense? I hope I made it make sense. And is it something that you would really want to invest some time and do the long term? Absolutely. Now, if you want to learn more, I always say we have our weekly GovCon Lunch and Learn. What I do is every week I choose a subject and tomorrow it's going to be all about the updates we have for disaster relief. Talking about how you're going to get paid if you have trucks, what they're looking for, how the um, Army Corps of Engineers, what they're doing in the state of Georgia, what's happening in Florida, and much more. So if you want to learn the real deal for disaster relief contract opportunities, make sure you sign up for my free GovCon Lunch and Learn. Click the link below, and I'll look forward to seeing you there tomorrow around 12 noon. Until next time, take care and be safe. Bye-bye.